So in this episode of Reading Old Magazines, we're still reading from Windows NT up here. Now this particular article had some interesting graphics to show you. The title here is Foil Attacks by John Mexner. Foil attacks on your registry, know your enemy, and take control of network security. And when we get there, I'll jump back over to this screen to show these really poorly rendered images. The March 31, 1997 EE Times article about the alleged flaw in Windows NT's security has sounded an alarm. I like how they say alleged there. In brief, the story asserted that a reasonably skilled kid with a PC and a modem could hack NT's passwords. How serious is the security breach the article exposed? In a official statement, Microsoft wrote that the only true threat to NT security is from someone first obtaining an administrative account and password. Okay, so I can see how that's an important distinction. And so they go on to write, contrary to Microsoft's statement, not just administrators can compromise NT security. The crux of the issue is who has access to the security account manager and security hives of the NT registry. The security hive contains security information for the local computer, including user rights, password policy, and membership of local groups. The SAM hive needs the security hive to work properly. If hackers can access the SAM hive, they can use a utility such as PWDump, and then they give a link to a website, which I don't know if it works, to obtain this. And apparently this is what screen one shows. And what it's showing is changes being made by the utility on the registry to let users read the SAM. So what is SAM? You know, five seconds ago we read that it was Security Accounts Manager. PWDump provides a printout of the hash codes and therefore makes them accessible to password crackers such as NTCrack and... I don't even know how to pronounce that, so I just wrote it out. Here are steps a potential hacker could follow to crack NT security and what you can do to prevent such attacks on your system. So part one, hacker goal one being to gain access to the SAM. Users can gain access to the SAM and security hives in several ways. Microsoft says the best way to protect your NT system is to protect the administrator accounts. But administrators are not the only users who can access the SAM and security hives. Server operators, backup operators, and even ordinary domain users can view and dump hash codes from the registry. Protecting administrator accounts is not enough. By default, no user has the proper permissions to access or even view the NT SAM. However, the SAM and security hives are like other files. Users who have permission to copy the registry files, such as users who might have to back up the registry, can copy and manipulate these files on a whim. If you log on as a backup operator, however, you can't just copy the SAM and security hives. The registry is open while NT is running, and a sharing violation occurs when you attempt to copy the files. However, the regback utility on the Windows NT Resource Kit, CD-ROMs, lets anyone in the administrator, server operator, or backup operator local groups copy the open registry. The list of potentially dangerous users, however, includes more than these three groups. Regular domain users can invade NT security if NT is on a fat volume, and they have permission to restart the machine. All they have to do is boot to DOS, copy the SAM and security hives from the system root system32 config directory, and they're in business. And I actually typed out what that directory looks like right above here. If you know what the percent sign means, share that with everyone in the comments. In general, if NT is on a NTFS volume, domain users can't boot DOS and copy the hives. But NTFS DOS, a utility written by Mark Rasinovich and Bryce Cogswell, lets users mount the NTFS volume in DOS. Microsoft says that the true security is physical security. Following Microsoft advice, lock the machines away and remove ordinary users' permission to restart the computers. If users can't restart the machine, the possibility of rebooting to DOS on a fat volume or using NTFS DOS is no longer a threat. <laughs> so this is me commenting here. Just imagine the world 
or you tell your users they're not allowed to do that. I'm glad we now have other solutions. We'll be forgiving, of course, because this is 1997. So they go on to write, is NT secure now? Ordinary domain users can't copy the open registry because the action will cause a sharing violation. Nor can users back up the system because they don't have permissions associated with the administrator, server operator, or backup operator accounts. But a fundamental feature of NT's built-in availability is the repair directory. After a successful installation and each time you run the rdisk utility, NT stores a backup of the registry in system root repair. The backup files aren't open and users can easily copy them if they can log on locally or if the directory is shared. By default, the NTFS permissions don't protect the repair directory. All users have read control and read control offers enough permission to copy files. For ordinary users to obtain the SAM Hive that contains passwords, they must access the current version of the registry. The registry is vulnerable in at least two ways. First, even though NT doesn't look back up the security and SAM Hives by default, when you run our disk, a copy of the SAM from the original NT installation remains in the repair directory. If the administrator has not changed the administrator password since the original installation, the password is at risk. Second, many administrators use the rdisk slash s command, which includes the security and SAM hives in a backup to an unprotected repair directory. In summary, here's how you can prevent an ordinary domain user from gaining access to the SAM and security hives on your servers. Don't permit local logon to servers. Use NTFS volumes instead of FAT volumes. Physically secure the servers. Change the default permissions of the repair directory. And last is secure your emergency repair disks and tape backups. Remember, users can still access their local machines registry through the repair directory or an emergency repair disk and attempt to crack the local machine's administrator password. One way to prevent this is attack is to convert to NTFS and set more restrictive permissions on each workstation's repair folder. Now their next section is called Hacker Goal 2, Dump the Hash Codes. Even after users have copies of the SAM and security hives, they can't easily view hash codes. They have to log on to an NT machine as administrator and dump the hash codes with pwdump. If they manually copy both registry files into their own registry, NT will use the hijacked SAM. Although users don't have administrative privileges at work, they are administrators on their home PC. From their home PC, they can dump the hash codes and at their leisure, perform as many dictionary attacks as they need to find the passwords. To copy the hijacked SAM to a local registry when NT is on a fat volume, users just boot to DOS and copy the file. If NT is on an NTFS volume, users can use regressed, another utility on the resource kit CD-ROMs. However, the hives in the repair directory or from an emergency repair disk are compressed and a compressed registry doesn't work in NT. But the compression algorithm isn't difficult. You can easily uncompress those files with the expand command in the system32 directory. If users replace the SAM and attempt to log on as the hijacked administrator, they overwrite their personal administrative password and don't know the new stolen password. However, the utility NT Locksmith, available at http uh, winternals.com, lets you change the local administrator password. So just anybody can get this utility, okay. Well, running this utility requires physical access to the NT machine, so they'll probably just tell you about physical security again if you were to complain. They go on to say most people do not have the physical access to servers at work, but they have access to their own PC. So after users change the password, they can log on locally and dump the hash codes from the hijacked SAM. The next section is called Hacker Goal 3, Crack NT's Passwords. Once users have the hash codes, they can use NT Crack, or this other tool that I can't pronounce but I've typed out. But these tools allow you to perform dictionary attacks. And that is going to be sh shown in screen 2, might as well jump there now. 
So screen one was changing permissions on the registry to view the hash codes. Here's all the hives and this window says registry key permissions. This is registry key Sam. Over here, screen two shows that uh, dictionary cracking tool. You have username, landman password, NT password, and then the NT hash. The outcome of the password crack depends on the quality of the word list or dictionary. Hackers use the more words, states, numbers, and word plays that are in the list, and the more complex they are, the better the chance for success. Therefore, a good password security policy greatly reduces the likelihood of a successful crack. For good password security, you can prohibit blank passwords and require certain password links. For example, a six character minimum. Require complex passwords, usually a random selection of letters and numbers, and you should be just fine. NT's user manager won't let you force complex passwords. However, you can set all the user's passwords manually and not let them change. Oh wow, that is horrible policy in retrospect. Well, screen three shows how you can use a resource kit utility passprop to require a simple level of password complexity. In addition, you can make passwords expire after a certain period and keep a password history so users can't use the same password repeatedly. And I won't even show you that picture because it's just so low, low quality of an image. Looks like it's a command line tool though. So this article's last section is called, Is All Hope Lost? My goal here is to show hackers step-by-step -step how to break into NT. Oh, it's not his goal. Sorry, did I skip that word not? Rather, I want to call NT administrators to arms to strengthen their network's weakness before someone takes advantage of it. The best way to defeat the enemy is to understand the enemy's tactics and know your weaknesses. Is NT insecure? It is open to exploitation, but strong security policies will greatly reduce the possibility of a security breach. These dangerous utilities are useless until someone can gain access to NT's registry. Microsoft has not protected NT's registry as well as it might have. Okay, that's an understatement. You can counter this weakness by implementing stricter security on the active registry and especially the registry backups, tape backups, the repair directory, and emergency repair disks. The registry is secure, NT is secure. And if NT is secure, you can sleep better at night. That's a pretty nice way to, for John uh, Mexner to end the article. And that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching.